Our company is uh, 30 people strong now. We've been going for about seven years. Uh, we've done over 300 projects. Uh, and those projects are re-manufacturing furniture for offices. Um, and so we have a design function as well that help clients to um, design a beautiful office full of circular economy furniture. For us, the circular economy is all about resource efficiency. So we started our thinking about the circular economy when we realized the enormous amount of waste that was occurring, and as well the huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions involved in furniture. So typically, the five-year cycle of a tenancy um, of, a, of an organization within a space uh, involves buying all new furniture at the start, uh, and new is probably the wrong word, let's call it furniture from virgin resources. And then at the end of that tenancy, they throw that all away and then again buy furniture from virgin resources. That means that there's a huge amount of product out there that's much of it very good quality uh, that's going to landfill uh, and recycling. We thought there was a much better way to do things. Our journey into the circular economy started really right from the foundational principles. So we've, we've been a big fan of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and the circular economy approach. And so when we started the business, we said, let, let's build a business that based on those principles right from the ground up, because it's very difficult to change direction once you've got a production system or, or, or a market. So we said we're going to build from the ground up. So we included um, right from the start, used furniture as a core part of our business. We've then expanded, for instance, into waste materials that we build into our furniture. So recycled yogurt pots, for instance. There's some wonderful plastic boards um, that are highly durable because plastic uh, PET is very uh, durable. What we've been able to do is integrate those into our furniture as well. So we start of sort of thinking the circular economy, both in the sort of circular reuse of furniture, but also bringing in waste materials um, to offset materials that are otherwise from virgin resources and, and typically go to landfill like desktops uh, and tabletops. Thinking about circular economy business models, I don't know. I mean, we, we, we've had a good run um, and we got lucky in our market timing. I, 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 what we always found is that there's two ways to think about a circular model. One is that sort of big corporate approach where you, you do everything um, in a regular way that's consistent with the linear economy. So I'll give you an example. So if you're thinking about uh, recycling coffee machines, for instance, um, and you call up TNT and say, hey, how much would it cost to get a coffee machine back from anywhere in the world? What's TNT going to say? They're going to say, okay, let's assume it's Alaska, worst case scenario. So that's an enormous cost multiplied by number of coffee machines and the economics just blow out really quickly. What we've found is that actually taking a really local approach to say, how can we improve those economics drastically, not just a little bit, but drastically by staying hyper-local, for instance, and setting up very local facilities where we can almost personally collect all the materials um, from the local area? How can we reduce our costs by using labour um, that, that isn't exp as expensive as, for instance, modern lorry drivers who are charging very large amounts uh, uh, these days in terms of salaries? How can we find better ways of doing things? So I suppose the key, the key thing that helped us a lot was just innovation. How can we change things to find better ways of doing things that are incredibly sensible, but also have social and environmental benefits, almost as a side effect sometimes?